is the T34 still worth it in 2024? Let's have a look. Is this a good tank? Is it a good bundle? No, it's not. But is this vehicle still worth playing or buying in 2024? The stats of the T34 look compared to the newer tier 8 American premium heavy tanks quite poor. You have only 2000 DPM. However, it does have good penetration and high alpha damage at 400. So that is two of its upsides right here. However, we immediately go into a load of downsides down here. The weapon handling aim time is awful. For example, it is almost a second worse than the T2065s and also a second worse than the T4E2. The dispersion is quite within the average margin right here, but the dispersion on movement is quite poor, especially if you compare it to something else like a Chieftain T95. 10 degrees of gun depression on all of these vehicles, so not a downside, but not an advantage either there. But then here we have the mobility. It does have worse effective powder weight ratio than a mouse. That is quite poor. And it is over four worse than the Tief 4 and the T26. So not really that great. So the only saving point so far is the average regular dispersion, the extremely high penetration, the alpha damage of 400, which is a little bit unusual for these American vehicles, and maybe the armor. The turret looks very good at over 300 millimeters in most of the spot and 270 here around the gun mantlet, which only an ISU 152 will be able to overmatch. And the gun mantlet as well is going to be somewhat impenetrable. So the third armor of this vehicle is excellent. And if you can get this vehicle into hold down position, it is going to become almost impenetrable. And that's where it kind of lives and does its best. It does have a cupola, but it is all the way at the back of the turret. So while using the gun depression, it is going to be completely obscured. And while on flat ground, this is a massive tank. So unless you are a massive heavy yourself, you might struggle to find that thing at the back of the turret. But that is pretty much the only way to go through there. Now, the hull is a completely different story. It is very weak. So you can pretty much pin this at any point, at any angle, unless obviously it is a very obscure angle from the side. But then you can just simply shoot at the side armor, which is about 80 millimeters. It allows it to side scrape just a little bit, but I don't recommend doing that in this vehicle in the first place. So what do we have? Extremely strong turret armor. It is quite massive though, so the side of the turret is uh, quite weak and exposed if that's what you're firing at. But the front of the turret is extremely strong. The hull, however, has to be hidden at all costs. And it's time for some gameplay in the T-34. Now, I'm on the NA server in this vehicle. I don't know, it just felt appropriate to put the eagle on here in an American tank and also play on the American server. And uh, you can join my clan if you want to. Uh, don't, it's quite dead and inactive, but anyway. Let's see what we can do. Now, I don't want to go over there I'm on principle, really. I'm going to go play the middle again. They only have one medium. But it is a very dangerous brass. So let's see if we can catch this guy off reversing. And indeed we can. That is beautiful. And I forgot to disable this weird reverse zoom out thing. That is quite sad. Uh, I, I find it more annoying than helpful. Because you can only do it while reversing. It would be nice to have it all the time. Okay, so we know now that uh, we have those two heavies. They're probably not going to live for very long. Um, the challenger is up there. That is an interesting choice. Try to shoot HE there. And it works just perfectly wonderful. This view would be very nice to have when also going forward. Now I'm going to be going out the Challenger. Probably going to go die. Oh, that's unfortunate. The Tiger should have pulled back quite a long time ago. The Barask's probably already gone because he figured out that the entire team is on this side. So we're just going to try to play this position. Watch out. Maybe there's a guy in that bush over there. I could have also been spotted from this side. Or I could have also been spotted from the IS-2SH or anybody over there. So... We have to be very careful here. And uh, yeah, there's the accuracy and aim time of this vehicle that is going to betray you in pretty much most situations. Now, the T29, my smaller brother, is quite dead. So that's A. Hey, look at the aim time of this thing. That is awful. Right there. Reverse out. And uh, what you really have to do is you have to play peekaboo style. Try to hide the hull of this vehicle and only play on the penetration and the alpha damage of this vehicle because that's the two things that it does excel at combined with the third armor the sit hull down in a spot play very slow and methodical this thing again it can't move quickly anyway so you have to play very slow and uh obviously it doesn't match the tornwagen whatsoever because tornwagen's turret is quite a lot smaller so personally the tornwagen is the better purchase if you want this exact style of tank to play especially because these old vehicles 
GT34, the Actiger 88. They used to be in very good bundles for 5.5k gold with 30 days of premium, like I already mentioned earlier, but now they don't do that anymore. It is 7,500 gold now. That is appallingly terrible. And just like this battle result right here, and I'm gonna have to be, stay very close to this guy to make him shoot into the turret. I think he has to realize that I do have a hull that he can shoot into. Well, he's probably gonna realize that soon. Oh, he has realized it soon enough. And now I'm gonna have to get around here away from the Borosik. 2.5k damage already done. That's not too bad. Obviously gonna be a loss, but uh, who cares about good games? This is live gameplay. So let's see. I'm gonna try to peek the Borosik from the side. There might be a guy pushing me from there. I'm 40 HP. It doesn't really matter at this point. I'm gonna go for damage here. Um, there is another set of damage. That guy's gonna go down, and I'm gonna try to hide. Obviously, shooting the Borosik with HE would be most beneficial here, but shooting the Tornwagen also isn't that bad. Gonna go for the engine deck. Please jump on me. I want the extra damage. Thank you for... 16! Ah, oh, damn. That's not a lot. Well, that's the first game in the Tier 34. And as you can see, playing it slow and methodical still makes it work. But for 7.5k, for a... 10 year old tank i don't want to buy that see this is the 5.5k bundle but it's 14 days instead of 30. so even though it is a 5.5k bundle it's still not as good as they used to be all right battle number two this time on the mines map right here so there's obviously one place i'm gonna go and that is gonna be the middle now we have one medium they have one medium um they're both t23s so they're not gonna be a threat to anybody really they have do it High DPM, but outside of that, it is not really anything. Obviously, don't want to go over there. The weak hull is going to make this a prime tank to play purely hull down. If you end up on flat ground, you're going to get penned in every situation. Now, by the way, I do want you to acknowledge that the camera is actually inverted, which means I have to write this upside down. So, leave a like, because I can write backwards now and mirrored. So, let's see. I'm going to go for this guy. I'm going to use the turret armor. And actually hit his... Yeah, okay. Let's see. Do Obviously, the tiger is stuck as heck. So that's not going to be a problem. The ammo... Uh, don't like him, really. I do want to stay a bit low because obviously this thing is massive. And you can see the Coppola got hit there from the back. Because whoever is back there, probably the AT-15, to be honest, is at a position that is basically flat towards me. Um, as was the uh, other guy then. So, you can end me quite easily when chewing straight into the Coppola. So, you want to hide that, you want to use the gun depression, but now we can just chill here and do absolutely nothing. Aim that in. Boom. 2.8 seconds same time is still awful, but you want to take your time with this vehicle. Play it slow and methodical. This is not the playstyle that I tend to enjoy. I play fast, show up everywhere on the map where the enemy doesn't want me to be, and I move around. With this vehicle, you just have to sit in one hull down spot. Hope there's a lot of enemies there. Hope they don't rush you. Hope you have good teammate support, which I kind of don't. Um, it's uh, not very great here. And then we're gonna have to sit this one out. I do hope the T-23 stays alive, the DTH and the SU. They might be quite useful help there. So my goal is now put the AT one shot, put the Tiger one shot that ideally the tank destroyers will be able to finish those guys off if they try to push and peek me. Now, the, the heavies on the other side even lost. I'm holding four enemies at bay right here, yet the uh, in a team that I had eh, didn't really help whatsoever, even though the Yo is a one-shot. So we do have a lot of one-shots, uh, which is a good thing. Well, the AT is still a bit too high here. Um, it's probably not as high as my team was, but it's a little bit too high. I'm gonna peek this guy and take a little bit of a risk here, and it doesn't pay off. That was a very interesting shot out there. And those guys, uh, the problem is I'm now stuck between a rock and a hard place. And I don't like that whatsoever. So I'm going to take out the tiger here. Now it is important to take out the enemy guns. I want to keep my hit points. I've already kept my hit points quite decently. The SU is in big trouble. I only have 2000 DPM, so this is going to be very difficult to pull off. And now the T26 is also dead. So AT is going to push me. So unless the DTH is going to support that, it's, nothing's going to happen. You're probably going to get shot in the ass by the smasher for like 600 so, or 800. So, wonderful team that I've had here, but I did the best I could. I try to go for this guy now. Spin this boy around. Probably not even gonna reload in time. 
to actually kill the Smasher here, or 808 hit points, that's not gonna happen anyway. <laughs> Lol. That was HE bounce off the turret. That is lovely. Now the DTH is not gonna do anything, but that is 4,000 damage. Nonetheless, for game number two in the T34. It works if you play it slow, if you play it methodical, if the enemy team just sits there, which I think is a lot more common on NA than it is on EU. Like, I think a NA players are a lot more submissive. Like, they let damage get done to them a lot easier. But that's just my observation. I don't know if you play it on both servers, put it down in the comments. I would love to know what you think about the different play styles of EU and NA, but I just think NA players just like to have it done to them more. Okay, that sounds wrong. All right, let's get into the third battle with the T-34, and let's hope that this time the team is not as non-existent as my hairline. And uh, we'll see what's going on now. There's three mediums and three on our side, so that's going to be a hopefully a balanced fight. Nope, the CDC is actually a bit... yeah. Then again, this is an A. So, immediate disadvantage on this match right here, and at least the tank destroyer is helping out over there, so that might rectify that. Obviously, I'm not going to go all the way up there. This First of all, this vehicle's too slow to cross safely. And second of all, what are you doing up there in the first place? So, let's see. Find anybody. Tank store or of the sort. Nope. Nothing there. And now I'm pretty confident that nobody is actually going to be here on this side. Yep. Nobody, nobody, nobody. Well, well played, CDC. You're very useful. Nine is also YOLOing himself to death, which is not very great. Let's now go for the air conditioner right here. MXAC, put him in the back with HE, is that gonna work? Nope. Not gonna risk it, it's gonna go for it regularly. Okay, 5100 is the big threat here. I wish one of the, the CDC would make himself useful by taking out the AC here. Um, but uh, now yeah, STRV is dead as well. Yep, this team is amazing. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, push here. Go take out this guy. Get one back. Still all full HP. Just look around to check. We're down one guy. We do have a somewhat surround going on in the enemy team. I don't know what that guy's doing really. Let's just fire that off. Let's see. Yeah, this is going to be quite problematic. Especially because they still have three mediums alive and we don't have a single competent medium alive. That is going to be a pretty big problem. As long as the CDC is distracting the MX, that is fine by me. Okay. So, let's see. Remember, useless teammates are still useful as hit point sponges. Uh, why are they coming back? This is like the worst play they can make. Like, if you're being attacked by the enemy team and they're pushing you, the worst thing you can do is turn around and go back. Right, because then you're just running into... Uh, the brunt of the enemies. Which is exactly what these guys are doing. And that is not going to work out well for them. Obviously, the Skoda and the Barasks made the correct decision there to attack from the other side. But now we have a four-on-one advantage right here, and we have to use that very quickly. Come on, get your fat ass moving in the vehicle and the VK. Probably going to get possibly shot by the Borsa camping in a corner somewhere, so I'm going to quickly retract myself from the position. And now probably going to push this way, so I'm going to, again, not... Try to turn around fully. Here they are coming. Just gonna go back and take one shot. And then I'm... What is it with random bounces? This thing has 248 pen. Why do I bounce off the most random tank positions you can possibly imagine? So wait, the heck is that ball sick? Because that is our problem right now. Because he's up, up there, I have a problem. He's really anywhere, I have a problem. Still have enough hit points to uh, survive here. But now I'm gonna try to get a flank going on this Skoda. And ideally, also the Barras, because that guy... Okay. Uh, back off now. Skoda's gonna force clip me. Can't do anything about that. Can HE him, hopefully, if he turns wrongly. Like that. Patience is key, sometimes. Obviously, he's gonna reload his clip. He's gonna push. The Barras also gonna push. If both unload, I'm dead. Obviously, the hull on this thing is awful, so I'm gonna have to be very careful here. Prioritize the Barask. There we go. Well spotted by the Charioteer to help me out. That is very lovely. And now we have a Borisic that is probably going to kill me. Or not. But there's that. That is the T-34. Is it worth buying? Absolutely not.
Can it still be good in the correct hands? Yes, it can be. If you play it slow, if you play it methodical, and you have the map awareness and game awareness, it can still be a vehicle that works just about fine. But in the grand scheme of things, if you compare it to a T-77 and a T-42, this thing is pretty terrible, if we look at it honestly here. It can work. Uh, it is not really good, and for the price of 7.5k, it is a bit of a joke.